finishing up a house circa 1850. This house formerly had a very large wooden gutter system and it was installed in the traditional manner called the, which we've discussed briefly maybe in one of these videos called the split fascia system. Essentially that means that the gutter was attached to the rafter tails. This was a brilliant uh, device that was used in Victorian times for several reasons. One, the gutter remained dry in the back and dried out quickly in the front. It didn't create a water lock by being attached directly to a fascia. And secondly, and more importantly, uh, it was able to connect to a raking mold and form a true pediment, something as old as grease. But we'll get into that in the next video. Here's your Boston pattern gutter. So we're concerned about the S curve here in this main gutter. And this connects all the way around to the house. The cameraman will show you the length of this gutter, transiting to the front of the house. Once again, it's a very strong gutter. Okay, I am now standing at 200 pounds on the gutter, on the edge of the gutter. Uh, note the, the high back of the gutter. So this is the second piece, this is a custom molded copper gutter. And the secondary piece is a roof flange that attaches to the gutter, forms both a drip edge and a roof flange tucking way up underneath the shingles. In this case, about 12 inches. It too is soldered, tin sweated and soldered, as are all the joints. And that's an important thing too. Tinned, meaning a light layer of solder prior to assembly. Sweated means heat transfer. And then laced, which means a buildup of solder. Failure to do that sweating part especially will result in failure down the line. Thank you. Call the number at the bottom of the screen and we can help you with your project.